Appreciate you, King. Appreciate you, King. Shit, hey. Hey. It's not a teacher not to eat beef and pork, man. Hey, yeah, we. It's That's killing us, right. man. Right. Uh, hey, they think it's killing us, man. Yeah. Right. Don't eat pork. Don't eat that shit. Hey, all praise be to the most high, man. So look, like the brother was saying, there's a dietary law. It's a dietary law of things that we're supposed to eat. Now we're not supposed to eat. <laughs> So you know that you're an Israelite, right? Of course. Yeah, you have. What, what does it mean to be an Israelite? He's the first and the chosen one. The first and the chosen one. Now that since we're the first and the chosen one, does that mean that we guarantee to get the kingdom or to get to eternal life? Okay, to be honorable. We have to be honorable. Right. And now how do we be honorable? I abide by all the rules, the laws. By all the laws, right? How well are we doing with the laws? How well are we? Yeah. Very good. All right, how well are you doing with the laws, my brother? Maintaining. You maintain it. Why don't we get together and we can work on getting better on that? We can work on growing on that because that's all what it's about. You got a card? Oh, this is a business card? Yes, it is. Okay, because look, the laws is what it's going to make us, right? Give me Matthew that's 19 right. 16. Read this real quick. This is Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that it may have? That I may have eternal life. So this Israelite is talking to another Israelite. He said, look, what do I do to get eternal life? Because that's what we want. We don't like to be dying. We don't like getting sick. We don't like loved ones passing away. So we want to get to that eternal life that the scriptures prophesied that it was going to happen. But how are we going to get there, right? Go ahead. Verse 17, he uh -huh. said unto him, why callest thou me good? Uh -huh. There was none good but one. Right, because we all imperfect, right? Go ahead. That is God. Uh huh. But if thou wilt enter into life, Keep my keep the commandments. It says what? Keep the commandments. We have to keep the commandments. So we got to get back to all the commandments. Of course. This Bible, man, there's so many scriptures, right? There's so many right. books. We're like, so there's a lot more commandments. There's, there's a lot, lot more, more commandments. Just ten commandments. There are more than that. So you know what the ten commandments is? The ten commandments is just it, it assists. If you keep the ten commandments, then you'll keep majority of the other commandments. But there's some other commandments that we don't understand or that we don't really keep. Appreciate you, King. Appreciate you, King. Shit, hey. hey. It's not a teacher not to eat beef and pork, man. Hey, yeah, we, it's that's killing what us, about. man. Right. Uh, they they think it's killing us, man. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't eat it. pork, uh, yeah. Don't eat that shit. Hey, all praise be to the most high, man. So look, like the brother was saying, there's a dietary law. There's a dietary law of things that we're supposed to eat. Now we're not supposed <laughs> to eat. And guess what? The scriptures, and give me a Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Oh, you got this Okay. Uh, you can promise eleven and one. Okay. So you know about do you know about the dietary law? I have one meal a day. Lots of herbs, lots of fruits. Okay, so you have the fruits and veggies. So there's certain things that we can eat, but certain things that we're not supposed to eat. That's what the Most High put on the earth. There's certain animals that's supposed to just clean the earth, but we just partake in it. Yeah. You're not supposed to do that. Read that Proverbs 11 and 1. Rukhan, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 1. Uh -huh. A false balance is an abomination to, to the Lord. Have, we have to have a balance with our diet. So you right. say you eat one time a day, that's good. You have a balance in your diet. Right. But there's certain things that we can partake in, certain things that we can't. Like the brother mentioned, we can't eat no pork. Yeah. Man, that's what the I think that's an abomination. Part at the bottom of the seat. Exactly. Exactly. Brother already know, man. Yeah. Brother already know. Show him the dress code. So what? Yeah. Have you heard about? You know why we're wearing the fringes? Not quite. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna show it to you real quick. I know you want to move, but number chapter 15, verse 38. So it's a reason. Like you yeah, said, it's so many laws. Yeah, there are. There's so many laws. I, I believe that it's just a mere thought yeah. of a disgusting act. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We don't want to have to defy the power exactly. mindset. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Can you hear him? Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them. So look, he said, Numbers chapter 15 and 38 says, Speak unto the children of Israel, which you are, right? right? That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So he said, Make them fringes in the borders of their garment, right? Why? Throughout their generations. Said, throughout their generations. So it wasn't a thing that, oh, that's what we used to do. This is something that he said, throughout your generations, keep doing it. Right. And it's going to tell you why. Go ahead. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And they also a ribbon of blue. That's why we put a ribbon around it, right? Go ahead. And it shall be up to you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So all it is is a sign. So when I look at these, I recognize that I'm a sacred, a holy, separate people. 
and that I have a law that I have to live by in order to reach our salvation, our eternal life. So uh. this is what it is. So same way you got a football player, you wear football clothes, right? You got a basketball player, you wear basketball clothes, right? You got a soccer player, you wear soccer clothes, right? You're an Israelite, we wear Israelite attire. <laughs> That's what we wear. So it's a tire that we have to have. Hey, show them the judgment if you don't. Yeah, Give them Zephaniah 1 and 8. Uh -huh. And it's a judgment. People don't think it's a big deal. But the most I made you different. You have an attire. And, and, and uh, you know, another thing too, this is something that you see that we was wearing back in the ancient days. Of course, you can see the pictures that. and you're like, this yeah. is what we wear. But it was a reason it's because of this. And there's a judgment for it. Is that correct? This is Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such are, are as clothed with strange apparel. He said he's going to punish them as clothed with strange apparel. So he don't want us dressing like, you know, like an American and in, 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 in their fashions and their culture. He wants us dressing like our culture. Well, that's what they did. They cut us off from our original language, our original history, our original right. science, math, all that. Astrology, right. the whole thing. They gave us their history. Their narration of what we want or how they want us to be. Right. And we keep following them, right. especially from an internet's perspective. Exactly. We're always just, who's doing what? They got three women on the platform. The rest of the black women want to be like these three? Yeah. Right. Dressed it's dope. Wear the same clothes, bring it the out. eyelashes, the nails, the yeah. hair. All that fake attire, man. And the, the most high attire. says, look, he said, I'm going to punish them with that strange apparel. Yeah, that strange apparel. So I know you, um, well, who do you uh, learn from? You, you seem like you got I some study. I just you read study. and study. I actually started in 96. Like said, somebody gave me an ancient scroll, a 100,000 year old scroll. Oh, okay. oh. Somebody gave me a 100,000 year old scroll. Okay. Number 36, I believe it is. It's the Lost Tribe. Lost Tribe. Told me everything. Yeah, yeah. I was mad for three days when they, I figured this out. I'm like, really? I'm in school, but you're right. not teaching me this? Right. And all I see is this dude with his thing tied around his head. He's being whipped. Yeah. Other people are sitting in there real scared. That's me. That's not me. Right. Right. It's got to be more than that. More than that. Right. So that's why I suck. I suck. But you know, I know because I was raised by a school teacher and a lawyer. I was raised by a school teacher and a lawyer. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Yeah, a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. But she had a huge dictionary. She had a whole, uh, 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 um, a room full of books. Yeah. She had a law library. Yeah. I saw our greatness already. Yeah. I already knew what we were already Hey, there. that's why we was. So when too. I got to the school, all I saw was that type of history about us being slavery, and I was like, oh. But I didn't learn that, and I failed that. Right. I failed that history. Their science, their story, I didn't so right. Until I got to school. And I knew I was to get a scholarship when I went to Dorsey. Yeah. I had a full scholarship at the University of Oregon. Uh -huh. I, if I pass this class and get an A or B or C. Yeah. No D's and no yeah. fails. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't even get that I don't, because I, I wasn't mindset for that. Even though I knew I was going for another ever um, layered in my journey, yeah. I didn't pass that class and I didn't get the scholarship. Why? Because I didn't feel it in my heart. Exactly. So look, this this is our history right here. Like you said, we go to their school and we learn their history. Yeah. That's why what they say his story. His because story. Where, where is our story? Our yes. story is right here in the scriptures. And a lot of times, you know, when you go to those schools and even when they try to teach you about the Bible, they show white images. They take, the, they take our Savior, Jesus Christ, right? And they show him as being a, a white man, blue eye with, with shrinky, uh, shrinky hair, right? right, right. When in the scripture said, yeah, wool texture hair. We talk about David, when they talk about Solomon, said that he was black, right? right? He was black, yeah. bronze, right? And he said, and, uh, Solomon, he said, I'm black but beautiful. He yes. said, because I was out in the field and I got darker from the sun. You know, what happens when a so-called white person gets in the sun? They get cool. burned, right? They get red, they don't get darker. And, and, and beautiful in complexion, that's because of our melanin that we got. Right? So I, I appreciate you, King, but no, we gotta get connected because what you know. Can you email me some literature? Okay. Okay. You got his number on there? Afro yeah, he got his number right Afro. here. Afro. Afro is the name of my company. Apparel okay. Five Roundout. The acronym yeah, yeah. is Afro Pig. Yeah, you got Afro Pig. Okay. <laughs> oh, my Afro Pig. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Afro Pig. Blessed with that. I wasn't trying to put an acronym of F A F R O Apparel Five Roundout. Oh, yeah, that's I cool. wasn't trying to do that was blessed to me and when I realized it was what it was. Oh, I'm you like, got a pair of like clothes and stuff too. Yeah, Support your business. That. Definitely. So, all right, King, well, I'm going to get con in contact with you because you know, we got to continue building because the Please information do. that you know, all, all these brothers got to know. Everybody got to know. All yeah. our people got to know because right. the way that we do yeah. here in, in, in America right now, it's crazy. Wickedness. Very Very Wickedness, proud. right? It's weak. Right. If we're paying and we're feeding somebody who truly deep down inside doesn't love us. 
we keep feeding them, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and more authority over us. And they yeah. become hostile and afraid of them. And anything they tell them to do to us yeah. against each other, right. we do. We fly. So that's what's happening. They sit back and narrate it and make the story. But let me show you this one scripture real. This is about, uh, when you were talking about the mind, brother. Right. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. Uh -huh. The thoughts of foolishness is sin. Yeah. And the scorner is an abomination to men. He said the thoughts of foolishness is sin. So we don't want to live in that foolish lifestyle no more. You know, when, when, when you look in the word ignorant, what is the root word? To ignore, right? Right. We just want to ignore the facts. But well, that's why we got to come out here. We come out on the streets. We got different. We go to maybe an event. My social media. You know, we got this one live shit for people just to see. And that's what we got to do because we got to get our people from their foolishness. Definitely. One more thing, brother, you know what today is? No, I'm bring it out. Um, I know it's a blessed day. I'm alive and well and healthy. Uh, but, but today is a specific and special day. You know, it's, it's the Sabbath. And I'm going to bring Sabbath that out for you, brother. Um, we used to say that at the beginning of our prayers or our dinner. We remember the Sabbath day. They get yeah. holy. Uh, for real. You know, when, when is the Sabbath? Come close. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. So this is in the Ten Commandments, right? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So answer the question of when is the Sabbath? Oh, you come here, Mama. To answer the question on when's the Sabbath, it's on the seventh day. When is the seventh day of the week? Saturday. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. So right now it's the Sabbath. But remember, he said on the first, read it again. Yeah. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In it thou shalt do thou shalt not do any work. So on the Sabbath day, we actually not supposed to go to work. Yeah. All these businesses are supposed to be shut down. You know how it is on Christmas Day? That's how it's supposed to be on the Sabbath, every week, right? Right. Uh, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maiden servant. So even if you had your own business, it's supposed to be shut down. Because any servant that you have is supposed to follow by the rule. Right. So your rule will come from the scriptures. So on the Sabbath day, all right. businesses shut down because we don't make no money. We ain't buying or selling. And then also, go ahead, continue. See, you know, I know on those days, I used to work up in Calabasas, and I see those Jewish. so called Jewish people. Yeah. No nothing, no electricity, no cars, they yeah. walking to and from and doing anything. Yeah. And they establish who we are. I believe that they are actually in our place. Yeah, they are. They are in our place. You get that, too. You get yeah, that Revelation uh, 2 and 9 where you yeah, finish the Sabbath. Uh, nor thy cattle, nor thy, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Yep. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, right. the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. So rested the seventh day. Get the cooking, Exodus 31. Uh -huh. uh, but go ahead and read that Revelation 2 and 9 which you're, uh, uh, to, to compliment your point. This is Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Uh -huh. I know thy works in tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And, and are not. He said, I know the blasphemy of, of them who say they are Jews and are not. Those are the ones that's over there in West Hollywood that took our identity. Yeah. Wearing the little, what is it, the yarmulke. yarmulke. You know, the yarmulke and wearing the tickets, the little strings, right? But doesn't it say not to cover your yeah, time? So, your hair? It says not to cover it. Why? Because of the everlasting pineal gland that is spiritual. Right. And it covers that. And yeah, it even gives you an explanation that at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it's because there's a, there's a hierarchy. Yeah. You got the most high, you have his son, you have the man, and you have the woman, and you have the child. Right. So we are supposed to have the man, when we're actually going over the scriptures, the man is actually not supposed to have his hand covered. Because if he does, then it says that he's disobeying his hand. And who is his hand? Christ. Right. So even in a scenario right now, with your hood on, technically we're not supposed to have a hoodie on either. So while we're going over the scriptures, if you want, we're going to go over a few more. So you want to go ahead and just take your video off. I'm going to show you the scripture that showed that too. Go ahead. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh -huh. And the head of every and the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the man is Christ. Christ is our head, right? Which is a dark skin melanated brother, right? Yes. But the head of the woman is the man, right? Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God, right? Every man praying or prophesying 
having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So we dishonor our head when we pray with our head covered. And when we dive into the word, with our head covered. It's supposed to be you, you uncover yourself in, in order to receive that blessing. Go ahead. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. But for the woman, she's supposed to have her head covered. Why? It's because she's under submission of you. You are her leader. And she, you know how you know how a woman when she she covers herself to show respect and honor for you. So that's what it was doing right here. So that's the hierarchy. I get that. Right, so you have to leave. It's, it's a whole bunch of information. Yeah. Uh, even now going back to the Sabbath real quick, because I don't want you to lose that because today's the Sabbath. So we know there ain't no working, no businesses, no business should be done. And relax and take it easy. Right. I, mean, I worked earlier this morning. But yeah. But now, see, so you learning well, the information. And we're going to exchange like information more. Three, four, five in the morning. That's how they are. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to exchange information because I got your, your info now. But yeah. go ahead and read that real quick. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 35, and verse 3. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. Leave mm -hmm. it on the Sabbath day. Time. Read it again. Come on. Verse 3, ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So even on the Sabbath day, when, when you continue reading down, it was talking about them cooking. Cooking with fire. Because that's what we do. You cook, you, you light the pan, and you cook. But on this day, it's supposed to be a day of just a complete rest. See, that's that's the scripture, Salak, y'all. That's the scripture the fake Jews misappropriate, and they say... You know, I can't turn on the light switch. I can't turn on my car because it starts a fire. It wasn't talking about that. It was talking about cooking in the context of a fire. They so they misappropriated. Bake, bake now or see what you will see. Talking yeah. about what she was going to Give me a prep day. Give me a prep day. Yeah, get a prep day. Uh, Exodus, what is this? 16 and 22. Yeah, they misappropriate that. The Jewish. Yeah. They don't supposed to. They don't belong in this Bible, though. Well, I, I believe that they did it really to suit their need. <laughs> their comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. They can feel comfortable where they're at Exactly, because right they know they truly they're living in a lie. you got to make themselves so comfortable. Everything's clean around. The house smells good. No smoking, yeah. no nothing. No eating of raw food. That's why they, they'll make it seem like it's okay for us to live here, for them to live there. Because they feel like, oh, they're the holy ones that the most high chose. Right? Go ahead. Come on, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 16, and verse 23. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today and see that which ye will see today. He's talking about cooking. He said do it today because he said tomorrow is the Sabbath. And you ain't going to be able to do it tomorrow. So it's a preparation day that we have. Right. Right. Uh, and that which remaineth and that which remaineth over and lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Until the morning. So you could cook something right before like that's gonna be my meal tomorrow. Oh. You ain't gonna add no heat. You ain't gonna. You can't warm it up. You can't do any of those type of things to add fire to it because the Most High, He said, I gave you a preparation day. He said, on this one day, just to honor me and just to worship me. Give one day where you can just honor me. Right. That's all He wanted us to do. But we be so focused on working, man, and, and burn ourselves out. Yeah, I know a lot of people are like that. Um, yeah. I was just having a discussion with a higher power and about working. Yeah. We're working for someone else for all of our life. 50 years, yeah. we break our backs, our fingers, every inch of our living, and then they throw us to the curb, basically. Because we don't have the luxury life after we have worked 50 years. We don't have that luxury. We don't have a business to own. We don't have nothing to Can't come to. Time. No, we don't have any wealth. We just right. have what we've given and delivered to somebody else. Right. So resting on that day, it should be every day. Yeah. And within yourself, bring out whatever it is that's great. Right. To yeah. indulge in, to exploit yeah. your own gifts. I mean, you know, psychiatrists, they'll tell you that you need time to rest. It's always a rest period that you should have. So, but the father yeah. says, he's saying, he said, look, I know y'all been working all week. He said, just give me one day at least where y'all can really honor me. He said, man, I'm giving, this is a blessing for us to be here right now, for you to breathe and have breath of life. So, you know, the father, he gave us an order. And that's how we were successful. That's how we was kings and queens. Right. That's how we, we was big we on knowledge. Be able to get together. Exactly. We all took that day off. It's because we had a law, we had an order that we can live by, and the world was in peace right now. It's in wickedness. Yeah. And the reason why the scriptures and revelations talk about Babylon is falling and destruction is because it caused the whole world to be out of order. Yes, the whole world influenced the whole world to act just wicked. 
out of order, no self, no discipline or anything. You just live and do whatever you want. No size about order, right? So we rest on that day. We don't cook on that day. Also, this is another thing that you should do on the Sabbath, brother. It's the book of Luke, chapter 4, and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And his custom was when he went in the, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So so, every, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. So basically, um, that's our custom. Like if you have a shah, don't we supposed to follow after him down. and be Christ-like? So on the Sabbath day, Christ, he was reading the scriptures. He was diving into it. He was amongst his brethren. You get me? Right. He was bringing out the word. And that's another beautiful thing. While you're resting, you know, go ahead and get you a few chapters or a few scriptures in. Or uh, watch, um, brother's going to plug you in with the YouTube videos that we put out and things like yeah, that. Yeah, give him the channel. Great edification yeah, yeah. for you. Believers of the way. Yeah, we got Believers YouTube Believers of the channel. way is our YouTube. Do live classes. Do everything. That's your uh, cell phone number? On the, uh, on the yeah. card? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll text it to him, all right? Uh, 213. Okay, yeah. Two one three four five six four five six zero seven zero seven seven one seven one. Okay, I'm gonna send you that information so you can check it out. Pretty sure you guys have been Yeah, there's a whole lot of depth. I'm just finding out and realizing what the landscape is on this planet. Okay. Like I'm the so deep that this landscape wasn't always here, right. as well as that moon it just showed up. Anyway, peace and blessings to you, brother. All right, King, yeah, love. Man, all praise the Lord. Shalom, Shalom praise brother. Man, get a brother a hand, come on, man. Yeah, all right, praise the Lord. That's beautiful, so I'm going to send him the page. Well, we know, man, it's, it's it's a work in progress, man, so that's exactly what we do it for. You know, you know how to speak or anything, but, you know, the most high, I'd be like, well, if somebody I'm going to make walk by, and I need to hear the word. And that's all we're doing it for, man. Give me a Zephaniah 2 on verse 2 and 1. Two and one, give me uh, Psalm chapter 133, verse 1. Yeah, get that uh, Zephaniah. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Gather yourselves together. See, the Lord wants the so called black and Latino, his people, to gather themselves together, right? Go ahead. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. Because we not desire. We don't continue to get killed. We don't continue to get destroyed. Or we continue not going to prosper as a nation of people. So the Most High says, gather yourself together, O nation, not desire. Go ahead. Before the decree bring forth. He said, before the destruction come. Before that decree come and it hit earth. He said, gather yourself together. Get yourself unified. Give me that. Psalms 133 and 1. This is Psalms chapter 133 verse 1. Behold, how good and pleasant is it. For brethren to dwell together in unity. See, that's what the scriptures say. Behold how pleasant and beautiful it is for brothers to dwell in unity. So we bring in unity back to it. We know that uh, the reputation of the so-called black and Latino man, and we not unified. We don't have any type of order. We can't dwell to, uh, together without any type of bickering or arguing or fights going on. But the Lord said, what? Read it again. Behold, how good and how pleasant is it? It is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. See, in unity, it's a beautiful thing. Go ahead, read that. Con, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 1. Uh-huh. In three things I was beautified. Right. And stood up beautiful both before the Most High and men. So there was three things that the Most High was like, man, this is beautiful. Go ahead. The unity of brothers. Is that what? The unity of brethren. No, Crips and blood. The unity of brethren. Right. It says the unity of brethren. That's just one thing that the Most High was just beautified by. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors, which is your own people. We should be loving one each other, right? That's in the law, right? Go ahead. A man and a woman that agree together. And we bringing back that unification back in the household, too. The rightful order, we bringing back the, the, the true essence of how the so-called black and Latino is going to get out of oppression and how the Most High is going to come and redeem us. It's because when we going to follow everything that he says, he said he's going to come and redeem us from our oppression. He's going to redeem us from the stress. He's going to redeem us from everything, these doctrines, these false doctrines and all those type of things. The Most High is bringing back order. You got a preset? Yeah, Con, that's good. This is Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. Uh huh. 
But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. It says Israel shall be what? Shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. The Israelites is going to be saved in the Lord by everlasting salvation. Go ahead. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. See, the most high said, oh yeah, that's it. Come. The most high, read that last part again, my best. I'm not getting you. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So it's not going to be a shameful thing. The most high said you ain't going to be ashamed. You ain't going to be confounded. You're going to be prideful. And you're going to have dominions. You're going to have order. And the most high said it's going to be a world without end. That uh -huh. John 3, 16 was salvation for your world. For the so-called Israelites, right? Go uh -huh. ahead. I this is the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Uh -huh. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, uh -huh. for he has visited and redeemed his people. See, he has visited and redeemed his people. Redemption is coming. Redemption is coming. So we have to prepare ourselves to be redeemed. We got to clean our homes. We got to clean this living coming out of our, uh, of our soul, of our spirit. We got to get back on our rightful order. Go ahead. Uh, it has raised up the horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David uh -huh. as he has spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began. Since the world began everything was for you so called black and Latino salvation is for you Christ is for you these prophecies is for you <laughs> all this is for you these promises is for you right? Go ahead uh, that we should be saved from our enemies. We shall be saved from our enemies. We're going to be saved from our enemies. So we got to continue holding on. Give me a verse 3 of that. Time. This is Romans chapter 9 verse 3. For I for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ. Uh -huh. For my brethren. Right. For my kinsmen. Uh -huh. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. Ain't no such thing as no spiritual Israelite. It's according to bloodline and flesh. Right? Go ahead. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who are Israelites? Who are the Gentiles? Who, who are Israelites? Who are the Edomites? Who, who are Israelites? The Moabites? Who, who are Israelites? The Israelites is the ones who's pertaining that adoption. Go ahead. To whom pertaineth the adoption? Uh huh. And the glory? Uh huh. And the covenant? Uh huh. And the giving of the law? Uh huh. And the service of God and the promises? And the promises. We are getting the promises. And that's how we're going to get out of this. We get an identification of ourselves. And we're going to figure out what the things that we we have to repent, which is turning away from sin. What is sin? Sin is breaking the law. So we understand the law. We understand what sin is. We, we, we don't fall into that sin anymore. We walk away from that sin and we teach our neighbors that. Huh. We teach them. We show them back to repentance. And we're going to continue doing that. Go ahead. Who are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? Uh -huh. Who is over all God blessed forever? Amen. God bless forever. Amen. So we gonna rise. We gonna continue to rise. And with that, I say shout out my elders working, trying to get together, making sure we do it better, free us from this wider pressure. My people catching cases, double life he facing, scattered all across the world. I see familiar faces. Say we all.